Hey folks, so welcome to my drone lair. Uh, pardon the, the full on gamer look. Uh, we just came off filming some drone racing on the simulators. Uh, it's for DRL, it's on Twitter and uh, TV these days. It's pretty fun to have a look. Anyway, I am here for a tutorial today. Um, if you've been following my Instagram account, uh, you know I've posted a whole bunch of footage of looking at the drone from different angles, like third person views from the front side. And um, I thought I'd do a little tutorial because I got a lot of questions on those. Um, a special shout out goes to Insta360 because they sent along a whole bunch of cameras and uh, we're gonna go through how you can use them to get those angles. So anyhow, third person view drone racing, let's go. So first up is the hottest thing in town, that is the Insta360 GO. Um, it is a 20 gram action cam with really, really powerful stabilization. Um, it shoots 1080p and you can like choose the aspect ratio, what comes out and everything. So it's, it's a really powerful tool and it's a lot of fun. You can put this pretty much anywhere and uh, the footage will come out really good. So before we get into how to mount the camera and put it on a drone, let's maybe just talk about how you use it. Um, so the, the camera itself charges in the space. Uh, you want to line up the little connectors here at the back. You kind of just plop it in and you'll see the light here. The green means that the base is nicely charged and the red here means that the camera is uh, almost discharged. So anyway, the base is charging um, the camera and then you can use this USB, uh, micro USB, to plug this into power um, to charge the whole base up. Um, anyway, so to connect it to the phone, we are gonna use this little adapter cable that comes in the camera package. Let me plug this in. There we go. Um, you will get prompted to then open the app. Um, you do need to watch out that um, you do need to use the camera in not in just in reverse charge as it's suggesting here, um, but to transfer files. And then once the connection gets rebooted, we can go ahead and open the app. It's the 360 Go and uh, connect to the camera. And normally the first time you get prompted to activate and then you do that. There we go. You're activated and then you can go into shooting. Um, I mean, once you do that, normally then you would go into Bluetooth control. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute. What you do wanna do is, uh, for example, I actually already went out and, and shot a few clips, but you can, uh, you basically see the clips that you used uh, right here and then you can you know work with them as you please and do some edits um, Let's wait for this to load up There we go for example here I was on my mountain bike and uh, you get all sorts of options you can choose how you crop it frame it um, the, the, the field of view you can make it linear you can make it um, wide anyhow you can download the clip was in points, out points. This is all pretty intuitive. Um, the, the one thing you do want to do is now connect to the camera via USB. So, sorry, via Bluetooth. So you can talk to it. So that is under album. Uh, sorry, under this little thing here in the middle. The camera icon. For that, unplug the camera. Turn the Bluetooth on. Um, yeah, I guess we need location. We're gonna have to turn the camera on. The way you do that is just you hold the back button until it buzzes twice. There you go. Camera shows up. Okay, and there we are. Here we are in the uh, options. Um, what you do want to do is, um, you can see the modes here. Uh, you can select standard video, um, interval video, slow motion. Uh, we need the standard video. And then in the recording length, uh, you wanna make sure that you scroll, normally it starts I think at 30 seconds. And then you wanna make sure you scroll down all the way down to five minutes, which is the FPV mode. And that's it. That is really all there is to it. One last thing I forgot to mention 
is you basically start recording with this button in the back. There's only one button and there's one LED. So you basically press this button once, the camera actually buzzes, you feel it buzz, and then you see the light is going, so that means we are recording right now. This is recording video. Uh, to turn it back off, we click the button again, it actually leaves the camera on. But we can turn it off by just holding the button in the back here, and it turns it back off. And that is basically the video mode in a nutshell. That is on and off. If you want to turn the camera on, um, you just hold the button until it buzzes twice. Uh, you can press the button once, and then that gives you a photo. Or you can press it twice, and then you get a time lapse. And then for the time lapse, you see it kind of flashes like that. So there you go. Stop that. Next, let's look at how you mount this on the drone and get those super cool shots. So the easiest thing is to get one of these uh, bike mounts. Uh, this one is off uh, Insta360 bike mount. Uh, you will need a, um, one of these tripod thingies. These come with the, um, with the bike mount. Um, screw this in. And then you need the stand. This comes with the camera. It's the 360 go stand. Check this on. Well, all right. So, right. This is the stand. Um, then the fun thing is the, the camera basically just pops in with a magnet. Um, I would not recommend using it just like that. I would recommend uh, taking a piece of tape, just electrical tape, and just run that all around the camera. Uh, watch out, there's an LED here just under the lens. You may want to see that to see if the camera is recording or not. And uh, off you go. At least this way, you're not the camera's not going to go flying off uh, if you hit anything. But um, yeah, so if you look at this video, this was actually shot using Eraser 4, and the camera was mounted right here, like under the aircraft. So you had the camera here in the back with this little boom and uh, yeah, something like that. Pretty fun, eh? So that's one way to do it. it this mount is actually pretty sturdy. Um, it's a good thing about it. If you use the little sticky pads, uh, that just provides enough vibration isolation and uh, you should be able to use the stabilization, no worries. So the one drawback with this setup is the weight. So this whole arm without the camera is basically 80 grams. So it's pretty hefty, you know, if you have a seven inch quad, that's fine. Uh, if you have a five inch quad, something powerful, that's okay. Uh, but if you have a micro quad, well, what do you do? So um, let me show you my little contraption that I did for my 75X. This is probably the smallest drone you could carry this with. Um, on this guy, um, you'll see there is this little plate here at the bottom that runs across. It's actually a little bit of um, corrugated plastic. There's some scraps I had laying around. And there's a little zip tie that runs across here. Um, there's a piece of glue that just kind of glues this vertical piece on. And it's glued here also to the frame. Um, so it's for the full on DIY job here. Uh, my battery is kind of, uh, I think it's taped on. Yeah, it's taped on here at the front just to counterbalance the weight. And then you use a tiny zip tie, hook it up to this, like that. And uh, you have a machine that flies and uh, the 20 gram stabilized gimbal. Um, here's some of the footage that I shot you saw somewhere earlier, but it comes out nice and clean, super fun. Yeah, I, I didn't think this was gonna work, but you know what, it did, so it was pretty cool. My latest mount for the Go is basically this kind of chopstick mount. So you do the same thing uh, with this mount here. I basically poked a, uh, a chopstick into the, the mounting hole and taped the, taped the crap out of it. 
example, you could just take this, this is my thick, uh, and you could just kind of, you know, zip tie this onto the arm here or anywhere, anywhere you see fit on the drone. And uh, yeah, here are two angles that I shot with that. Uh, one is with my nutmeg, it pokes out the back there. And the other one is with the thick, just as I just showed you on the back of the motor. And I mean, it's, it's pretty fun, it works. Um, sadly there, there's absolutely no vibration isolation. So uh, you can't really use the, the, flow, um, the flow state stabilization on the camera. Uh, but I mean, it still works. You just turn the flow state stabilization off and you get a pretty decent shot. Now, yeah, I mean, if you wanna go full, full on pro with this, you can. Uh, you can design like a TPU mount that will mount something to the frame and that will obviously solve all your vibration issues. But anyway, I thought I'd show you the sort of tinker options that I had out there and uh, they're pretty fun, so why not? All right, so next up are 360 cameras. So if you don't know how they work, um, it's basically something like this. This is the uh, Insta360 ONE-R. Um, the camera has two lenses, one on each side. Each one captures like a 200 degree field of view. So the whole you know, front plane and the back plane. And then the software stitches everything together uh, to give you like a three, you know, seamless panorama in all directions. So this is obviously awesome on a drone because you can um, you know, frame it any direction you want. And notably, you can frame it at the drone itself. So, well, how does it work? So you can do the obvious thing and put it you know, straight on top of the drone, like that in the middle. Um, so here's a shot of uh, me doing that. Um, sadly, you will see that the drone has a lot of distortions. Um, it looks kind of wonky. Um, that's because the, the lens is way too close to the drone itself. And um, you, you need to distort the image quite a bit. Um, so to solve that problem, well, you put the, out comes the stick again. Um, this is again the bike mount that we were just looking at. Um, just put this on the bottom here. Right, so now you have the camera a bit farther away from the drone. Uh, it's not gonna be as distorted, uh, but you still, like if you angle it wrong, you are gonna see the, um, the support stick in the shot. And maybe you, you don't want that. Um, so you wanna hide uh, the mounting system here. So the first thing you wanna do is align the camera straight. Uh, once you see, once it's in line with the support stick, the stick actually goes away. And you can, the pro tip is you look at the little screen here on the back of the camera, you can angle the camera to make sure that the stick goes away. Now the next part is, well, how do you angle the stick itself? Uh, you could put this thing straight up or angle it a bit backwards. I'd like to angle it a bit backwards like this. And again, check on the screen here um, so that my four props are in view and it's not cropping out any of my arms. Um, that's all in the stitching process. Um, the other pro tip is then, once you shot it, once you've flown and everything, um, make sure to have a look at the different stitching methods in the app. Uh, it blends them, you know, slightly differently and some of them work a bit better. So, you know, this is what it looks like. All right, so you have this stick working. This is pretty cool. Um, but you want to graduate to the, let's say, pro level of filming your own drone with the 360 camera. And uh, this shot is, I think, an example of that. Um, basically, you'll see there is no distortion of the drone. And uh, what I actually used is this kind of weird mount. And this was actually done, this was actually shot like more over a year ago on an older camera. Um, let me show you how this all fitted together. This is the camera, this is the, the One X um, that it was designed for. Um, basically the camera would stick onto this and then on the drone itself it would be fixed. So this is my drone and then it would go like so. So what's the big deal here? Well, you'll notice the, the two lenses, one's looking down and the other one's looking up and essentially the stitch line does not go through the drone at all. Um, you could do the same thing um, with the with this mount to be honest uh, you would put it on the drone like so and then just angle the whole camera this way looks kind of weird but you know you're gonna see you're gonna see the pole in the frame but at least the stitch line is not going to go through the frame so you're not distorting it 
there you have it. That's, you know, solution, let's say number three, where the drone looks the best. And um, your stitch line goes through the sky uh, where it isn't too noticeable. Anyway, there you have it. I hope that these uh, few tips helped you out. Um, I mostly I hope that they inspire you to create some crazy contraptions <laughs> like the ones I've been putting together um, just to get them stunning footage, get out there, shoot, have fun. And uh, you know, if you're feeling like picking up an Insta360 uh, 1R or a Go, um, then have a look in the description. I have some codes for you down there. Uh, not only do you get extra free stuff, but um, I get a, it helps me out as well. So thanks for that. Anyhow, keep flying, have fun. See you next time.